I wanted to take some time and do some training and some instruction on small groups. I'm a real believer in small groups. FCFC, Faith Christian Family Church, is a real believer in small groups. We've been doing them for over three decades. Uh, actually, I met my wife, Becky, in a small group that I was doing before I was even pastor here. And I taught a small group. Uh, it was really more of a Bible study in Troy. And I was really uh, encouraged by everything that I saw happening and the, the level of relationship that I could see in a small group. And even then, was so much more than I saw on Sunday morning at church. And so over three decades ago, we began to do small groups here. And we've done them a lot of different ways over the years. There's no magic formula to it. It's really just getting people together and applying what they're learning from the Bible, either on Sunday morning or from their personal reading. There's so many different techniques. You can use many methods. You can do a discovery Bible study where you go through the Bible. You can have an accountability group. You can have a men's group. There are curriculum groups where you study a certain thing. There are affinity groups where people who like a certain thing, maybe bike riding or whatever, do that. My wife and I led a small group once where we rode the bike on the Katy Trail, bicycle. And uh, then we would stop and have a Bible study at a certain place and then ride some more. I've also been part of a small group that was a motorcycle small group. So there's all sorts of options. Whatever your interests are, whatever you're doing now, you can do that in an affinity group. And then you can do a sermon uh, study where you just simply take whatever was studied that Sunday, a group can get together and talk about it and apply it and say, what does this mean for our life? I think it's very biblical that Christians meet in a corporate setting like on a Sunday morning church service, but also for them to be in smaller groups, whether it's in a coffee shop or a room in the church or in a house or outside or whatever it is. But here's a scripture from Acts 2020. We like to call this our 2020 vision. It says, you know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house, publicly and from house to house. I think it's two wings of a bird. I think it's two blades of the scissors. I think we try to do one without the other. And the truth is, I think we need both. We need the corporate worship. The time when we come together, there's a presence of God and an anointing where certain things happen that don't happen when you're just by yourself. We need the teaching. You know, there are people with teaching gifts. We need to get together in, in fellowship and do those things in large groups. <clears throat> but it's so important that we break it down into groups of 12 or less and just interact with people. When Jesus wanted to change the world, he started a small group. He poured out his life to these 12 men that he selected. He preached to the multitude, but he would always bring them aside and try and apply it and say, did you guys understand what I just said? And so you need both. You need the public. But if you're just living on the corporate preaching, you're not ever really getting it down into your digestive system, so to speak, where you're able to apply it. Think about Jesus' method. He would take his disciples aside and he would pour out his heart to them and he would do life with them and he interacted with them. And I just don't think we can escape that that's a biblical principle. It's so important to uh, choose what your your curriculum should be or your method should be, if it's a, a sermon preparation or a sermon study group or whatever it is, and then find some people, whether it's you and two other people or up to 12 people. You don't want to go past 12 because at that point it becomes just another service. Beyond 12 people, you really can't interact well. Really, the truth is at seven, it's perfect. Where, you know, if you get somebody who's quiet, they'll get in the group and just not speak if there's, you know, 10 or 12 people. And so in order to get maximum participation, you really need to get less than 12. That's what Jesus did. And seven is perfect. I uh, do a lot of study on John Wesley and the Wesleyan revival uh, in England in the 18th century. And it's interesting. He was a minister. And he began to preach on the streets and do all sorts of different things. And a revival took off. But the way that they were able to contain the fruits of that revival was with small groups. He had groups of 12 that were would meet weekly in what they call class meetings. That's a little deceptive because it sounds like it's a, you know, a class room, but it's just a small group. And then beyond that, they had groups of same-sex people, you know, all male or all women, that would meet together in groups of three or less for extreme accountability. And they would ask each other, how are you doing? What sin are you struggling with? See, a lot of people don't want to be in a small group because they really kind of like to just skim off the top and hear what the Sunday morning service, service is and maybe apply it or maybe not. But if you're in a small group, 
you're being forced to think about and answer questions and give accountability for what you're hearing. And so Wesley and his organization, which later became the Methodists, uh, really had an incredible revival. And most people attribute it to their small group system, that they're able to get people together and have them accountable to each other and trust them. You know, that's the thing about pastors and small groups. You've got to trust people. You know, sure, somebody might do something crazy, but you've got to trust people. You've got to take that risk and say, it's worth it. And people grow best when they're kind of in each other's faces. You know, they do life together. Iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. And so we call our groups discipleship communities. You know, we try and do things outside of the church where people who don't go to church can have access to a, a, a church, really. It's a small group, but it's a church. And then within the church, we do all sorts of different things. On Wednesday night, we have teaching. And then we have small groups. We have uh, small groups that meet uh, about that service right then, right, that sermon. And then also we have you know things like Financial Peace University and Emotional Healthy uh, Spirituality and Discipleship and so many different things. But the key is this. You need to find something that you are doing now. What is your world? Do you ride bikes? Do you play tennis? Do you play soccer? Do you meet with the moms in your neighborhood? Whatever that is. You know, do something that you're doing now, only add the God element to it. And so what you're doing is you're simply letting people express where they are. You know, when people talk, you know exactly where they are in their spiritual life and really in their life. You know, out of the mouth, you know, the abundance of words, the abundance of speaking comes the truth about who you really are. Uh, out of the abundance of the heart, Jesus said the mouth speaks. And so the only way to really know where someone else is and even to know where you are is to look at what you're saying, what's coming out of you. And then you can address that and confront that. And you grow best in a group. You grow best in a group. Jesus poured his life into 12, spent three years with them. We've seen so many incredible things happen in small groups. We've seen uh, people get born again in small groups. We've seen people get healed in small groups. But mostly, I've seen people grow up in their relationship with God. Our mission here at Faith Christian Family Church is to grow up, to grow together, and to grow out. Growing up is maturing in your relationship with God, learning the Word of God, interacting with God, developing a friendship with God, uh, obeying God. Jesus said you're a disciple when you obey, so your life is transformed, and that's growing up. And then growing together is loving one another and interacting with one another. Jesus said they'll know you're my disciples because you love each other. And so the key is, as you interact with other people, that's how you really grow. And that's how you show that God is really among you. And then growing out <clears throat> is reaching people who don't know Jesus yet and simply making the gospel available to them in different ways. Could be in your small group, could be in a lot of different ways. So growing up, growing together, growing out. And this is just an introduction. I know you might be afraid of doing this. And I'm just going to really encourage you to get involved. Go to a small group for a semester. And that's another thing. We do the semester system so that there's a starting date and a stopping date. We have a fall semester, a spring semester, and a summer semester. And the reason for that is because we like to stop them all and start them all. So you don't feel like you have to divorce your small group to stop going. In other words, you don't have to go forever. You're making a one semester commitment. Now you can go forever. You can get so close to that group that you say, we want to stop and start again the same thing. That's fine. But what you should do is just maybe if you've never done it, go to a small group for a semester. And then if you're a covenant partner, if you're on the dream team here, you can be a small group leader. Just simply let us know. Tell the campus pastor at Winslow or Warrington, Tony or Joe, that you want to do this. We encourage it. Um, take a risk. Jump out. You know, swim into the deep. It's amazing what God could do through you. One of the greatest thrills of my life as a pastor is to be able to see people released into ministry. I don't want to be the performer as a pastor. I want to thrust you into ministry so that you're out in the deep, you're taking some risks, you're reaching people, you're helping people, and you're growing in the process. So be part of a small group.